Okay, so why are these so important and why do we care about the sign change in itself? Now, the reason why is this very special rule here called Descartes' Rule of Signs. Okay, so Descartes' Rule of Signs says, let F be a polynomial, so such like that. Okay, now we have two conditions. The number of positive zeros is either the number of sign changes in F of X or is equal to that number of less than an even number itself. Now, this is the tricky part. This or stuff is kind of funky, but the first part is hopefully straightforward, right? So what this saying is, if I look at this, right, if I have, let's say in this case, we have three sign changes, right, one, two, and three. So therefore, we have a pos possible four, uh, three positive zeros from this polynomial, possibly, okay? So that's what the first part says. The second part says, or if I get every even, even number between it, so what are the even numbers between one and three? Well, just two, right? That's the only even number between one and three. So what I'm going to do is subtract two from three that gives you one. So that means I have either three positive or three minus two gives you one positive. So that's how that second part's a kind of funky uh, rule when it comes to it, okay? But don't worry, we'll have plenty of examples of how that as works as well, okay? Now the good thing is when it comes to the negative f of x, it's the exact same process. So the number of negative zeros is either the number of sign changes in now, f of negative x or is equal to the number less than the same thing. So that, that number less than an even number. So we'll go back over here. We had two sign changes. So we have a possible two negative zeros or well, what's the only number between even number between one and two? It's two, right? Or two minus two, zero negative sign, uh, negative zeros. So this gives us a scenario how it comes to it. So in other words, once we start actually solving for these kind of things is the Descartes rule of science says, well, if I have, let's say, you know, if I find out there is no negatives, therefore it's guaranteed to have the, or if, I'm sorry, if I, you know, I find a negative, for instance, therefore I know I'm not going to have this scenario. I'm going to have actually two. So it kind of narrows it down the gap when it comes to it. And you'll see how that works in a little bit. Um, you know, it's a kind of a funky rule but it's actually useful in the end when it comes to it. So just, you know, bear with me now and you'll see how that works out in a little bit, okay? All right, now the last um, scenario we're gonna have, or last definition is also called the ratio, rational zero theorem. Very, very important, okay? This one says that F be a polynomial. Uh, so here's our basic polynomial F of X, right? So A sub N is the first term, you know, all the way down to A sub naught, which is the last term in the polynomial, right? So in this case, like for example here, a sub would be negative three, a naught, last term would be five, right? The one with no x involved, okay? So again, where a sub n is, a sub n and a sub naught are non-zero, right? So not zero itself, okay? So this says, let p1, p2, p3, all the way to pn be the factors of the last term. So we're talking about the factors of the last term. And let q1, q2, q3, and dot, dot, q sub n be the factors of the a sub n term, okay? So essentially, we, all we care about is this term and that term in our polynomial, just the first term and the last term, okay? And we're going to write down all of the factors of them. So for example, you know, if we have 9, all the factors of 9 will be you know, 3 times 3, 9 times 1, right? So those are the factors of 9 itself. So, and then, now, the rest of the says is then the combination of the p sub n's divided by the q sub n's are the possible zeros of the polynomial. Now, I always remember uh, when it comes to this is last divided by first, because you want the last factors divided by the first factors. I, it's probably the easiest I can think of, because this could get confusing, uh, especially when you flip them around, you obviously will get drastically different numbers, and then it goes all the work, because when it comes to it, so because once it comes to these type of functions, you know, and this kind of examples, they're going to be pretty lengthy as as we go along okay so let's just try a little example out to help us out or some practice okay so first off let's list all the possible zeros of this polynomial here okay all right so basically we're just going to be using the rational zero theorem okay? so the first thing we care about is just the first and the last number itself okay so our a sub n is equal to two our a naught is equal to negative six now, what we want to do is we want to literally list out all the possible factors of 2. Now, you may be saying 2 plus 2 times 2. That's perfectly fine. Yeah, 2 times 2, two works. So those are 2. However, we want all possible factors. So, for example, 
does negative 1 and negative 2 work? Yeah, right? Negative 1 times negative 2 gives you 2. So essentially, you actually have twice as many factors as you may think, because you're including the plus and minuses as well. Okay, So this is plus 1 and plus 2 are your factors. You have four factors when it comes to just 2. Now, speaking of that logic now, let's try 6. So the easiest way to think about it is just the positive ones, and we'll just put plus and minus in all of them. So for instance, you know, 1 times 6 works, so 1 and 6 work. And then 2 times 3 works, right? And I think that's the only all possible factors. So now all we can do is plus and minus in front of them, because all the negatives also work as well. All right, so now this work it becomes this um, P A sub N over Q sub N stuff. So remember, it's always last divided by first. So what you're going to do is every single number, you can divide it by every number over here. So it comes down to a uh, combination portion. So it's going to be this number divided by that, this divided by that, and you just keep going from there. So you can have multiple ones when it comes to it. So for instance, your first marker is going to be plus or minus 1 over that number, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1, over plus or minus 2, and now you go for 2, plus or minus 2 over plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2 over plus or minus 2, and then you keep going for the 3, so 3 goes on top now over 1, and then 3 over 2, and then finally 6 as well. Now, you may think that's pretty lot, right? However, a lot of this is kind of repeated. So, for instance, right, this ends up being itself. So, it's just being plus or minus 1. It doesn't matter what you're dividing by. Uh, this ends up being plus or minus 1 half, the first one. Uh, this is just plus or minus 2. And notice this is actually 1. So, it's repeated. So, I already have that. So, there's no need to count it twice. This one's going to be plus or minus 3. This one's plus or minus 3 halves. This is plus or minus 6. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3, which again, I already have. So again, I won't count it again. So notice these, a couple of these will be rinse repeated. So basically, it breaks down to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, um, 12 total, right? Because we're including the negatives as well. So 12 total possible zeros to choose from. Okay? So that's how we do the uh, zero uh, rational zero theorem itself. So why don't you guys try um, B and uh, B and C. So try these out, okay? So go ahead and pause it, give you guys a 3, 2, 1, and then just pause it, then we'll do them together. So 3, 2, 1, pause. All right, so now let's try these together. All right, so first of all, we want to find our A sub N and our A naught. So A sub N is always the first number. Now notice there's no number in front. There's technically a 1 in front, right? Because there's 1 times X to the fourth. And the last number is an 8. Okay. Now, good news is all the factors of 1 is just plus or minus 1, right? Which is the best part. 8, however, has a lengthy one, right? There's 1 and 8. And there's 2 and 4. And I believe that's it. So now we're going to do the same thing. The good number one, right? So in this case, we had to do twice all these numbers over this one, all over number two. This one is all of these over just one itself. So essentially, all your factors are just this, because once you divide by one, it gives you this. Kind of nice. Okay. So that's B. Uh, next thing is we want to talk about is C. All right, so C says, um, gives us this portion. So A sub N is going to be 3, and A naught is going to be, again, negative 6. Okay. All right, so all the factors of 3 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. And we already did 6, so I'm just going to rewrite them here. Okay. All right, so now we divide every single one by that. So again... All these divided by 1 is the same. Okay. And now it's going to be all of these divided by 3. So you have plus or minus 1 third, 
plus or minus 2 over 3. And now I'm not going to do um, 3 over 3 because if you guys notice, right, that gives you 1 again. So hopefully you guys notice that pattern so that goes away. And also 6 divided by 3 is 2, which I already have on my list. So this is it. This is all the possible um, zeros of this polynomial there. So I'm at the 10-minute marker, so I know we didn't go get too far, but, you know, that's the reason why, you know, taking our time when it comes to these, because once we get to the actual uh, equations and actual examples of these, it's going to take a long process, you know, things like that, right? So that's the uh, second part of this video, so hang on and check out the third part.